hope you can hear me. Uh, I'd like to talk about some of the practical implications uh, of uh, the government's climate change proposal. I think Catherine has outlined uh, the broad direction that uh, we need to see a change in our energy mix. Um, when it comes to implementing government's energy policy, uh, much of that burden falls on the energy companies. And uh, CLP has experience in uh, uh, electricity production. We have uh, extensive experience and have been an investor in uh, the Dai Bay nuclear power station since the early 1990s. Uh, we have also been very active in developing gas supplies for Hong Kong. So uh, when we look at the next decade, I think it's important that we have a good understanding of what can be achieved, uh, whether the timescales are realistic, and just what that means for us in Hong Kong. I think if I was to give you a, a very simple message at the start, uh, we certainly believe that effectively increasing our nuclear portion from 23% to 50% is achievable. Uh, we were able to develop Dia Bay in the 1990s. It was China's first uh, commercial scale nuclear power station. And uh, that was developed in order to supply 70% uh, of its electricity to Hong Kong. So if we talk about growing our nuclear percentage from 23% to 50%, essentially what that means is developing another two units of the same size as Dia Bay, and that, if it could be brought in and uh, fitted into our energy mix, is what we would need in order to uh, see carbon emissions reductions on the scale as contemplated in the government's uh, plan. Now, if we look at greenhouse gas emissions in Hong Kong, uh, and this, is, this uh, pie chart on the left is taken from the government's consultation paper, essentially 67% of uh, greenhouse gas emissions in Hong Kong arise from uh, the electricity uh, sector, generation of electricity. The mix of fuels that we use in Hong Kong in total is uh, roughly half our electricity is produced from coal, about a quarter from nuclear power, and a quarter from natural gas. But if you look at the contribution that each of those fuels makes towards carbon dioxide emissions, about 80% of those emissions come from our coal-fired power generation. Around 20% come from gas-fired generation. And zero come from nuclear power. If we look at the carbon intensity of the choice that we have for generating electricity from various fuels, and I, I appreciate that you may have seen some charts uh, earlier today that may show some, some slightly different perspectives. And I think when you look at the environmental impacts of various fuels, you will always see some range there, uh, similarly when you look at costs. So uh, I've tried to represent the range by showing the heights of different, uh, different bars on this chart. Also, we need to take into consideration the indirect emissions, the generation uh, or the production of fuel, the mining operations, uh, the production of equipment, building a wind turbine, for example, does require energy. It, uh, it does uh, produce a carbon uh, dioxide footprint. But uh, very clearly, as you can see from this graph, uh, by far the highest production of emissions is from coal. About half that is produced by natural gas. And if we're looking to get significant reductions in carbon dioxide emissions, we have to look at the technologies on the right, the hydroelectric power, solar power, wind power, and nuclear power. Uh, we're not, I don't think we need to take a view that there's a right choice here. And I don't think it is the right way to look at it. In fact, all of these choices are needed if we're to get significant reductions in carbon dioxide emissions. But there are some practical limitations and constraints. Uh, Hong Kong is part of the mainland. We source much of our energy from the mainland. Uh, we need to be working in line with the policies and the opportunities that are provided from the mainland in a similar way that uh, uh, my friend from Greenpeace has, has outlined with London. London is part of Britain, and uh, the opportunities that London has are different to what we have here in Hong Kong. So I think it's important that we look at the, the practical um, opportunities, the practical constraints, so that we can uh, understand what, what is achievable here in Hong Kong. 
the cost is also very important if we're looking at choices. And um, this chart here also tries to show ranges. And when I look here, um, the cost of the production of nuclear electricity is uh, today on uh, a par with coal. Uh, we may take a view that fossil fuel prices are rising steeply and may continue to rise, whereas with nuclear power, it's largely the capital cost of the plant that uh, is, is the major part of the, the production cost. Uh, one benefit that can be gained from uh, a planned and large-scale development of any industry is that you can get economies of scale. You can get standardization of technologies, and uh, the scale can actually bring about um, reductions in cost. Uh, when it comes to renewable power, the, uh, the list of renewable technologies that I've shown uh, on this chart here very high variations, and the range of uh, production costs is largely dependent on the renewable resource that's available. And uh, as I'll uh, explain a little bit later, the opportunity that we have in Hong Kong for renewable energy is very limited, so uh, the costs that we would be looking at would be very much on the high side of these ranges. One contributor to uh, reducing carbon emissions in Hong Kong has been natural gas. We started importing natural gas in 1996 to Hong Kong. Uh, the field, the gas field that we have been uh, supplied with is approaching the end of its life. And at the moment, uh, COP is working very hard on getting three sources of natural gas to replace our existing gas supply. All three of these sources are going to be needed just to meet our uh, electricity demand requirements for this decade. And uh, as, as Catherine outlined in her presentation, we are dependent on the mainland for our sources of natural gas. Even with all of these sources available to us, it doesn't mean we have an unlimited amount of gas available to us. In fact, there is uh, a constraint on the amount of gas that we can source from the mainland. And effectively, that would represent about 40% uh, of our energy needs by 2020. Renewable energy is certainly an option that we need to explore. Uh, COP has been a major investor in renewable energy projects in the mainland and uh, elsewhere in Southeast Asia. We have looked extensively at trying to develop more renewable energy uh, cap capability in Hong Kong. But there are two major constraints. One is that we just don't have the the good solid wind power, we don't have uh, the, the strength in our sunlight, uh, we don't have hydroelectric resources, just the renewable resources that we have are not good quality. We also don't have the land available to us. Renewable energy does require large scale uh, surface areas, uh, that means a lot of land. So essentially uh, our options for renewable power are quite limited. Uh, we have uh, or in the process of developing a large-scale solar power system on an island out in the eastern waters of Hong Kong on Dawn Island. Uh, we're also looking at the feasibility of an offshore wind farm also in the eastern waters off Sai Kung. But these are relatively small in the scale of uh, the amount of energy that we consume in Hong Kong. So we see that even a 3 to 4% renewable energy target is very optimistic. And that brings us to nuclear power. As I mentioned earlier, COP was an investor in uh, the Dai Bay nuclear power station. We have been importing about, uh, in fact, in, in total Hong Kong terms, about a quarter of Hong Kong's electricity has come from Dai Bay since 1994. The plant has performed very reliably. Uh, it's performed safely. Uh, it has met uh, the highest international operational standards. I think very importantly, we must remember that it has helped us avoid 7.5 million tons of CO2 emissions each year. The contribution that nuclear power can make to reducing CO2 emissions is substantial. If you think of that 7.5 million tons in terms of Hong Kong's total CO2 emissions each year, which is 25 million tons, you can see that this 7.5 million tons from Dai Bay is a big reduction in CO2 emissions. And as I mentioned earlier, we have opportunities in uh, uh, contributing to and sharing in the development of nuclear energy 
in China. As Professor Lin has outlined, China has uh, plans to increase the amount of nuclear power in its energy mix to have about 4% of its primary energy requirements met by nuclear power by 2020. Now that means that new nuclear power stations will be built. And uh, if you look at uh, the Guangdong and neighboring provinces, there are about seven new nuclear projects that are either in operation, uh, sorry, in planning or uh, under construction. So uh, the, uh, the opportunity is there for Hong Kong. Uh, many of these plants are already earmarked for supply to Guangdong province. And uh, when we look at contributing and uh, securing additional supplies of nuclear power, we have to be thinking about fitting in with the mainland's nuclear development program. We're not in a luxurious position of being, being able to take whatever we like from the mainland. We have to look at a particular project. We have to look at matching the timing for that. Uh, we have to look at uh, bringing the power into Hong Kong. But uh, there are opportunities for projects which are still on the drawing board. They're still either proposed or in planning. Uh, some examples are the uh, Xiaoguan um, project, which is up in uh, the northern part of Guangdong province, uh, the Lu Feng project, which is out near uh, uh, Shan Wei area, out uh, very far to the east of Guangdong, or, uh, for example, the Fan Cheng Gang project, which uh, is actually in uh, Guangxi province, uh, just uh, on the border of Guangdong. So uh, we do still have opportunities to participate in the mainland's nuclear program, but uh, 2020 in the energy industry is not a long time. And uh, we do uh, need to make a move quite quickly if we are to secure some of these opportunities. Now, I'll finish my presentation there. And uh, we think uh, during the afternoon's debate, uh, perhaps some of these issues could be explored in a little bit more detail. But uh, given the time, I'll finish there. Thank you.